Christ still risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah indeed. And happy Mother's Day to everyone uh, out there today. Uh, today is the fifth Sunday of Easter. And I think there's not too many things we need to note about the service. That's how we've been doing it for the last two months. Our opening hymn will be hymn number 869, With the Lord Begin Your Task.
Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? I confess to God Almighty, before the whole company of heaven, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, Forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all your sins. Amen. I confess to God Almighty, and for the whole company of heaven, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore I pray God Almighty, who remembers on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all your sins. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song, Alleluia. His right hand and his holy arm and for him. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing his praises. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song, Alleluia. For he has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise. That among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday of Easter is from Isaiah chapter 12. 
You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is James chapter 1. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness that God requires. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Our Lord said, Now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. You will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us confess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. The hymn of the day is hymn number 556. Dear Christians, one and all rejoice.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Sometimes the Lord will cut across our bravado. What's the old phrase? Pride goeth before a fall. Our Lord has expressly told us that he will cut across our bravado, our false boldness, our bluster. Christ Jesus is the truth. Tall tales and boasts are not of the truth. So part of what Jesus does that Monday, Thursday night is he calls the disciples bluff a bit. Remember, they had all been bold and boisterous that evening. Oh, we'll never leave you, Jesus. Peter had the whole, I'll never deny you. Oh, really? Well, remember that boast, Petey, when you hear the rooster crow, all right? These were the disciples. They were supposed to be in the know, the inner circle. They could handle anything. Jesus takes them down a peg. Gently, mind you. The passion is terrifying for the disciples. Jesus gives them thinking, so it's not quite as big a shock. Now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But I have said these things to you. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Getting taken down a peg hurts, even if you need to be taken down a peg. Being reminded of your weakness, of your need for God, hurts. We we see this clearly today in the rampant fear all around us, or even in us. And for the disciples, it was extra scary because if Jesus goes away, it's going to fall to them to take care of things. Daunting? You betcha it is. Oh well, disciples, adulting is hard. And their boast and pride war with their fear and doubt, a mess I'm sure you're all familiar with. And Jesus is talking about going away. This is bad, isn't it? Nope, not bad at all. In fact, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. What's coming is better. What's coming, what the church will look like in 20 years, is better than it is now, disciples. It will be better for everyone when you're apostles instead of disciples. And it's true. Even now, even in the midst of pandemics and all that jazz, it is better. We've got a leg up on what the disciples had when they were following Jesus. Why? Because we live in the post-Pentecost church. Right here, Jesus points the disciples and us to Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit is poured out, the, the helper, the comforter, the paraclete. That's a great word there. That, that word helper in the Greek is the word paraclete. Right, so what's a paraclete? Well, when you were in court on trial for a crime, your paraclete was the person who sat alongside you. Para, like parallel. And he called, cleated out to you to tell you whatever it is you needed to know. It's your defense lawyer. The person who faces off against the accuser, the Satan in Aramaic. And your paraclete would speak to you all the things that you would need. He'd calm you down if you were panicking. He'd explain what the accuser is doing with all his tactics. He'd tell you how to counter them. And if you were going to say something stupid to the judge, he'd stop you. A useful fellow, a, a good paraclete. Jesus here is describing what the Holy Spirit does for you. You have received the Holy Spirit. You are baptized, washed with water and the word, and made a temple of the Holy Spirit. You are part of the same Christian and apostolic church with the same spirit given at Pentecost. Jesus sends you his spirit along with his word, and whenever you hear the word of Jesus, Jesus gives you the Holy Spirit at the same time. You don't need to try to find the Holy Spirit or catch him. He is with you. He is with the word. And what does the Holy Spirit do? Well, I'm glad you asked. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. When the Spirit comes, he's going to lawyer up and take the case square on. He's going to have his fancy and fine lawyer talk, and he's going to take it to the world. 
And he's going to smack the world around over three things. Sin and righteousness and judgment. First, concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. The Holy Spirit will show sin to be sin. In fact, you can't really know sin to be sin apart from the Holy Spirit and believing in Jesus. Most other cultures, they they don't really have the idea of sin. People might make mistakes, but most of the time they deny that fact. Or, Or people might have bad habits, but those get swept under the rug. But the idea of sin... The idea that I am corrupt and that I fight against my creator and that every action I take is tainted and twisted. That even I, Eric Brown, as I stand here in the church and preach, am a poor, miserable sinner in thought, word, and deed, corrupted and vile, deserving of death. Or that you, the the folks listening, hearing that you yourselves are sinners too, that that even believing in Jesus, you'll need to confess that that every week in this service we'll rightfully start confessing our sins. That idea makes no sense to the world. That makes no sense to us apart from the Holy Spirit giving us faith in Jesus. In fact, the only reason we could bear to consider the weight of our sin is because we've been given to know Jesus. To know that he takes our sin up up upon the cross and crucifies it. That there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. And that's what the Holy Spirit reminds you of via the word of God. And that's what we proclaim to the world. Second, concerning righteousness. Because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. The Spirit will proclaim Christ the crucified. Okay, Christ crucified, risen, ascended, and seated at the right hand of the Father. Christ crucified. Because that's what righteousness is. The world thinks that to be righteous is to be a a nice, decent fellow. But in reality, the world doesn't know what righteousness is. You want proof? Go get into a debate with someone about how we should handle governmental policy concerning COVID. What's the right thing to do? Oh, you'll hear so many theories tossed out about the right thing to do is. You might even toss out your own two cents, our, our own two worthless cents into the discussion. No, you, you want to know what righteousness is? While you were yet a sinner, Christ Jesus died for you. He takes up the weight of your sin, and in its place, he gives you all that he is. For he is righteous. No one is good but God alone. And Jesus Christ, the true God, gives you all that he is, and you are made righteous, justified in him. Righteousness has nothing to do with what you do, or your thoughts, or your plans. We we confess those as sin. But rather, righteousness is this, Jesus for you. And the Holy Spirit will proclaim Christ Jesus for you in a world that often forgets or ignores Jesus. And the third, concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Oh, and and just in case you get freaked out by what you see in the world, just in case the, the sin and death and chaos and illness and bickering that Satan has wound up gets you a bit concerned, the Holy Spirit will proclaim again and again that Satan has been defeated by Christ the crucified, that Jesus has risen and you will rise, and that there's not a thing Satan can do to stop your resurrection. Jesus wins, period. This world's prince may still scowl fierce as he will. He can harm us none. He's judged the deed is done. We can forget that sometimes. Sometimes we get overwhelmed. The Holy Spirit doesn't. And so in his church, the Spirit will proclaim the victory of Christ by Christ Jesus' own word of truth. And he will keep you in this victory and truth. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And this is the life of the church. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. The disciples couldn't get everything at that moment. And to be honest, we don't get everything at all moments either. There are some things about the Christian faith I understand better now than I did years ago, and there are some things about the faith that I understood better as a second grader. That's life. And that doesn't surprise Jesus. 
In fact, that's why he sends us the Spirit, because the Spirit will continually guide us to truth, to Jesus. The Spirit will make you see Jesus for you in all the ways that you need to see Jesus for you on whatever given day you're in. He's got it under control, and he has it under control for you. And the Spirit will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. The Spirit will again and again proclaim what is coming. Not what Tuesday's Powerball number is, or when I can go to a game at Wrigley again, or I'd even be happy and settle for getting up to Comiskey, or whatever they call it these days. No, the Spirit will proclaim to you Christ's victory, and the truth that he shall come again. And everything God knows you need to hear about Jesus until then. The Holy Spirit's got that in the bag. The Spirit will give you Jesus. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Holy Spirit will gospel you. He will pour out the good news of Christ Jesus' salvation so that whatever else is going on, you know, you hear that you have Jesus. Jesus has you. You are forgiven, redeemed, bound for eternal life. Every good blessing of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is yours. And that's still true today. Still is. Because the Holy Spirit is still with you now in the very word of Jesus Christ. God has comforted you. He has given you the comforter, the spirit, so that even now and for all your days, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And you have forgiveness and life in his name. And this is a free gift of God. No boasting needed. So let the Lord cut across your barato. He gives you something better. He gives you the Spirit, who always proclaims that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Please rise. A clean. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For all the baptized, that they would make a joyful noise to the Lord for the salvation they have in Jesus Christ, in whose righteousness they are clothed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all pastors in Christ, that they would be diligent in their studies, faithful in their prayers, steadfast in their faith, and compassionate towards the children of God that they serve, let us pray to the Lord. For our children and young people, that they would be brought up by faithful parents, that they would receive a good education, and that they would grow into fruitful maturity for service to home, church, and the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the vocation of motherhood, that mothers would love and care for their children, and that children would cherish and honor their mothers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those to whom you have entrusted earthly authority, that they, be give, be, that they would be given wisdom to rule according to your will, that they would work for the well-being of the nation during the present pandemic, and that they would enable justice and peace to flourish throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who suffer in this veil of tears, and for all who have requested our prayers, including our brothers and sisters, Benny, Diane, Evelyn, Raven, Doris, Genevieve, Lois, June, Mike, Dorothy, Randy, Krista, Violetta, Maggie, Bill, John, Glenn, Jeff and Jamie, Eric, Grace, Bonnie, Darcy, Lisa, Donna, Jeannie, 
Jean, Marianne, Darlene, Tanya, Kevin, Verla, Audrey, Dorla, Brian, Deb, Donna, and Merlin. We ask that they would be comforted and with a sure and certain hope of eternal life through Christ their Lord, know that the day is coming when no one will be able to take their joy for them. For this, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have gone before us with the sign of faith and now rest in Jesus, let us give thanks to the Lord, and that we would be enlivened by the gospel and sustained in the one true faith until our last hour comes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray as the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll close with hymn number 466, Christ has arisen, alleluia.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, just to wrap up, a uh, reminder, Monday night we will have Bible study. I'm not sure what it will be on on Facebook. I'm going to roll a die six, and we'll figure out what we, what we get. So there are six options I can't remember. But that will be on Facebook uh, Monday night at 7. We'll be keeping up with our morning devotions at 8.30. Um, mothers, uh, be merciful to those in your household if they've not been able to do their normal shopping for things that have been disrupted. Oh, the gals did not laugh at that one. That's a bad... Oh. You just can't see it. I'm hoping it Oh, oh. My, my wife says she's grinning, but she's wearing a mask. So, um, other than that... Uh, the... <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, and again, what we're going to do uh, last night at 5 p.m., we, uh, we did a uh, hymn thingamabobber with Paul. We're going to do that again. So if you have hymn requests where you'd like to hear uh, Paul play out something... Uh, a hymn, do let Paul know and he will take requests and they'll be up and ready to go. So, with that, I think that's what we've got. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And happy Mother's Day. The Lord be with you all.